they're responsible for some of the most famous video games in the world. When we were creating Abe's Odyssey, I just loved it. I loved who Abe was. I loved what he did. As we did concept testing, we found out that skateboarding is not about racing, it's about tricks. And so that is what started Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. But their rise to the top was met with obstacles. I said, well, obviously this needs to be a unisex restroom because there are urinals in here and you know, I don't really want to walk in on the guys um, at the urinals. I think we help make strides by working on all games across the board, not just working on a, a Barbie game. There were stereotypes. A lot of the games that are being made aren't necessarily geared towards women, and a lot of women just don't uh, appreciate them. That were tough to break. I suddenly realized as I was talking that they weren't listening to me, and that their heads had actually swiveled around, and their mouths were hanging open. But they eventually prevailed. A director of public relations, communications manager, design specialist, a producer, executive vice president, a president, president and CEO. This is the story about a small group of women who took an industry by storm and battled their way to the top. It's the story about the unstoppable women in gaming. When women first joined the workforce, their options were slim and their civil rights were limited. But this slowly started to change during World War II. And while the men were off fighting the war, somebody had to fill their shoes in the workplace. And as time moved forward, so did women. By the turn of the 21st century, women were everywhere. My name's Elaine Hodgson, and I'm president of Incredible Technologies. I'm Kathy Brabeck. I'm the executive vice president of Worldwide Publishing and Brand Management. I'm Sherry McKenna from Oddworld. I'm the president and CEO of Circus Freak Studios. These women and several others have become powerhouses in the video game industry. And just like some young boys, they have always been gamers. I was completely addicted to their games. I'd be playing at 3 o'clock in the morning with people huddled around the keyboard with me. I've always cut school to play games, so it wasn't a leap when I looked around and, and said, you know, I really want to be producing games. I love massively multiplayer games. And then there are those whose dreams weren't exactly filled with platforms and polygons. Actually, when I was younger, I wanted to be a pediatrician, but I don't like to see sick children, so couldn't exactly do that. I studied psychology and communications, and of course, when you study those two things, there's, um, there's not much you can do. You know, it's like, okay, so I have a degree in communications. Where am I going to get a job? I started just out of college not knowing what I was going to do and ended up working for a PR agency, uh, actually in Washington, D.C., which eventually led to Los Angeles because I thought I wanted to work in entertainment. I actually studied science for a long time. I had my bachelor's and my master's in biochemistry. Started my doctorate in neurobiology. But fate had other plans. When I finished graduate school, I happened to meet someone from Infocom. And they had a testing position open, and he called me. He said, would you be interested? And you know, I'm looking at the phone saying, wait, wait, you want to pay me to play these games? OK, <laughs> I can do that. Well, Incredible Technologies was started in 1985 by myself and my partner because we lost our jobs at the last company that went down and decided to do it better ourselves. I've just spent my whole career producing high-end computer graphics, and it took about two years to open up a video game company because, you know, I'm not a gamer, and I have very little interest in games, and I had very little interest in what they represented. These ladies are the masterminds behind some of the most popular video games in the world. And if fate hadn't stepped in, our consoles may have never met an adorable little guy named Abe. When we were creating Abe's Odyssey, I just loved it. I loved who Abe was. I loved what he did. Get me out of here. It never occurred to me that other people wouldn't identify the same way I did. So I wasn't nervous at all, to be honest. That's the arrogant part. I knew that it would reach out to the people and touch them the way it touched me. We may never have met the man behind the 900. 
As we did concept testing, we found out that skateboarding is not about racing, it's about tricks. And so that is what started us on the track of making Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. We all knew it was going to be successful. I mean, it is one of the top selling franchises ever. We may never have played ATV Off-Road Fury 2. It's the first game as producer I've worked on. ATV Off-Road Fury 2 is a sequel. It's a racing game on all terrains. We've enhanced our environments. We've added ATVs. We've added online to it. It's a real just pick em up play racer. It's a great party game for players. And an epic multiplayer online role-playing game may have had another perspective. I worked on Asheron's Call, which is currently a pretty popular game, has a very solid user base. But for these women, being a woman proved to be their biggest obstacle. I've been in situations where, you know, there was one restroom that I said, well, obviously this needs to be a unisex restroom. Um, and we need to have like some kind of a system because there are urinals in here and you know I don't really want to walk in on the guys um, at the urinals. Once I learned the business side of things, I started working with the producer on uh, Jet Moto and Twisted Metal. When you're sitting with a group of men and they're working on a female character, you know, there's always animation or her breasts. And sometimes they have to know you to know that it's okay to animate that character. These women just want to make games, but the stereotypes seem to greet them on every level. But then there's things like somebody coming up to me and saying, did you call the Xerox guy? It's like, do you see me at the Xerox machine ever? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't do photocopies. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't women in the industry. Of course, there are many women in the industry. They just don't get noticed as much. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the games that are being made aren't necessarily geared towards women. And a lot of women just don't appreciate them. Certainly when you come into the industry, people wonder, you know, are you going to be able to sort of cut it? Are you going to like it? And are you going to be able to understand um, the business? Unfortunately, the Xerox machine was just the beginning. The battle of the sexes has just begun. The fact of the matter is, this is a man's world. And women are second-class citizens, and that's just how it is. For women like Sherry McKenna, Flea Standifer, Kathy Vrayback, and many others, video games are their job. But the reality is they work in an industry that has always been dominated by men. Ugh! And for them, getting past the typical gender roles has been one of the biggest obstacles they've had to face. So I was looking for a job, so I called the lead programmer. He had not said anything about what I did up until that moment, and there was a pause, and he said, so you must be an office manager. And I, I actually guffawed into the phone and said, no, but that's a good one. It seems like when I first entered the industry, I tend to see more women on children's games or Barbie games. Um, I didn't see really anyone in sports. Launching Circus Freak Studios was a, a mutual brainchild between Uncle Grom and, and myself. They wanted us to continue to work for them. How far will these women go to fit in? Sometimes, you know, I'll step up and go, it's a female, you know, her, her breasts are stiff. They should be moving, or her ponytail should be blowing in the wind. I started wearing t-shirts all the time and stopped wearing earrings. I always wear my hair up, like, in this, you know, kind of convenient bun in the back, which is kind of frustrating, because I, I, I refuse to completely subsume my femininity to be accepted as, as part of this. But, you know, for a, for a while, I kind of have to until I've, I've worked my way in. And no matter how talented they are, when it comes to coffee, all eyes are on them. If you're going to ask me to bring you coffee, then you're going to drink what I give you. <laughs> My job is to ship games, not brew coffee. You know, he was talking, and then he, there was coffee in the back, and, you know, he wanted a cup of coffee, and he said, Cherry, could you get me a cup of coffee? Certainly, if you're put in a position where it's assumed that you're only there to serve coffee, then there's a problem. Being the minority does have its good points. 
you frequently um, go to industry association meetings or industry events, and um, there's never a line for the ladies' room. And something most of these women have to get used to. I've been in a situation where I was the only woman, or the only professional woman in a group of 30 or 35 people which is a very different experience. And I think it's funny because a lot of times when you come in as a female and they don't know who you are, they automatically assume that you're there just to maybe take some notes or get the coffee. Instead of them actually getting to know who you are, they assume. And working internally with Nintendo, yes, you know, was more male-dominated industry. I would love to see a man be in that situation where he would walk into a room and there'd be 10 women. He'd freak out. We'd say, oh, that's, that's really odd. But no, women get used to that all the time. For me, being too thin-skinned about this, I'd have gotten out of the business. Certainly in the earlier days, if you didn't have a sense of humor, you would have just bailed. I don't even pay any attention to it. If I paid attention to it, I'd probably run and hide under the bed every day. And what's the reason behind so few women in gaming? Part of the reason for that is the inevitable conflict between career and family. The work is tremendous, the hours are long, the sacrifice is sometimes really great. And sometimes in product development, the commitment to one's craft has to come first because of how much it takes and the dedication it takes to get a great game out on time. Clearly there's something going on that just isn't, isn't presenting this as an option. I think also a lot of women kind of get turned off by the really general, stereotypical view of the industry, that it's for teenage boys. I personally don't know that many women that actually like playing games. I can't convince my fiance to play any games. We still sometimes struggle, even in the industry, to find out what is it that females like about video games? What is it that we can draw them into it? A while back, the theory used to be that women, when they come out of college or look for jobs, didn't go to small companies. And all game companies at that time were small, and women like to go to larger, more stable companies. I don't know if that's very true anymore. The reality is, men and women think and work differently. Male or female, people bring unique qualities to a game based on their past experiences. Women's past experiences are slightly different than men. I find that women tend to, to take a slightly different view of whatever it is that's being presented. A lot of times it gets dismissed, but a lot of times it's taken very seriously, and those are exciting moments. Some of my coworkers in the past like having the female there because there are certain jobs they think she'll do differently from a man, or she's right on it, and she's not gonna waste her time. Everything is a priority. You know, you'll get it done right away. Some of these women's ideas are a little unconventional. I have a massage every single day. So I knew that with the stress that was going on, with the conditions that we were in, that it would be great to have a masseuse on staff that could give everybody a 15 or a half an hour massage. So maybe the answer to getting more women interested in gaming is to create more female characters. I think that it is good to have female characters because it makes it more approachable to women. It's unfortunate that it's quite often the female characters that men want to look at um, with large breasts and those kinds of bodies. And in all the games, we have a female athlete because there are females participating in the sports. At this point, none of the females have the sort of name recognition to carry the game, but there will always be female athletes in the games. It's always a belief that, oh, women love puzzles, or they may like a racer, but they don't like the core, and they don't like RPGs. So we're still struggling to, you know, to pull females into it. Some research came out said that 50 plus percent of all gamers were women, which at PC Gamer, we do our demographic survey and we've got 96% male. And that's more general understanding of the, the way it is. And I was at a round table a couple of years ago where the moderator was purporting that the reason women weren't playing these games was because they'd go to the electronic boutique or whatever and see Lara Croft and the EverQuest check in the window. Maybe it comes down to genre. The introduction of massively multiplayer online games is causing an upsurgence in the number of women playing games and getting interested in them, you know, getting involved with community. As games in general expand and the massively multiplayer options are there, you'll, you'll get more women playing and so more involved in the development. Yeah. So the popularity of The Sims has really brought in so many women who are playing it. 
The simple answer is they're social. You create relationships. You talk with people. <laughs> you interact with people. <laughs> it is something that interests women more than just going out and killing things. It's just that they're not necessarily going out and talking about it. I think they tend to be more casual in their gameplay. So the reason why we don't see as many women in the video game world is still up for debate. But the strides women are making are certain. Every day, more women are finding jobs in video games, and the advice they're handing out may surprise you. For the women in gaming, making video games is something they love to do, but fighting the odds is something they have to do. When I wake up tomorrow morning, guess what? I'm still gonna be a woman. And not only that, but I'm gonna wake up every morning and be a woman, so I can wish to be a white Protestant male, but it ain't gonna happen. These women help launch games that are innovative, admired, and made millions of dollars. They have opened doors for the next generation of women and are closing the gap between gender-specific jobs. I actually now run into one or two other women in the ladies' room when I'm at this conference. You know, I've never seen a line here, and you know, any woman who's ever been to any public function at all knows if there's not a line in the ladies' room, something is really weird. <laughs> I think the main thing is that the industry just in general has matured. There's been a greater understanding that we're not just a bunch of game geeks and it's, that's got to be a guy thing. If you look around, people are understanding that this is a business, so obviously there's no reason why women can't fill any roles. It's nice to see females as artists. It's wonderful to see them as programmers because that's really rare. So, and it's just to show that we're in every field of video game and not just in sales or marketing. There are so many things that are open to young women today that haven't been previously. And I would love to see more and more women getting involved in this business so that it, it has more of the type of balance that you see in, in other entertainment industries. Um, you know, go for it. I absolutely think that the role of women in this industry will change when the games uh, that are put out start tapping into female sensibilities. In the past, when technology was limited and there just wasn't a lot, that the game makers could do, naturally, it would appeal more to guys. As the technology becomes more sophisticated, then you can make the kind of games that women are more attracted to. Generally, those are games about stories. <laughs> games about characters that we care about. I can't find anybody. Whereas, if you can now get to a point where you can make a game that has more depth to it, it's going to attract more women. Certainly, as you start making games that appeal to women, women will want to be part of the process that put out, puts out this product. And these women, who helped pave the way, have some advice for those wanting to follow in their footsteps. And that's very simple. Do the best work. Work really hard. Figure out what it is you want to do and just be the best at it. Work really hard, be passionate about it, and you will win. And they have to accept you. They have no choice. It's a great business that it's growing and it's becoming more important in the whole entertainment field. There should be no barriers and they shouldn't even think about barriers. Just shake it off and just do the best job and actually make a difference now, especially. There's so many different arenas they could go into. If they want to go into art, then take some graphic classes. Um, if they want to go into design and actually design video games, then take and design and just whenever they get time, write up ideas and pitch them to their friends and see what they sound like. And above all, I mean, know games, love games, know that you want to make games because you'll be living, breathing, eating, sleeping them very long hours every day. I don't think there are any limits just because you have to be a woman mm -hmm. or you happen to be a man. That doesn't matter. Uh, if you're talented, you'll succeed. And these women are still excited about the industry they've helped change. It's just so much more involved and so much deeper. 
than I thought it would be, you know, just with how important the industry really is, how much it's growing, and how exciting it is to be a part of, of such a great industry. And, you know, promoting video games, I don't think there's anything more fun in the world than that. I think this is an extraordinarily rewarding, extraordinarily creative industry for women. One of the interesting things to me is that it never occurred to me that I couldn't do this, that I couldn't go into this business. And what do these gaming gurus have in store for the future? Bigger and better golf games, because we have a brand here that's working out very well for us. Wesson Studios is doing Earth and Beyond, our first massively multiplayer online role-playing game. You get to captain a starship, go out and adventure, and live the life of your favorite science fiction character. They're going to be very surprised. Let me just say that. The next game that we're creating, I think is going to be not what they expect. I probably shouldn't say anything more about it but that. So we know the video game industry is changing, both behind the scenes and in the games themselves. Women have climbed the ladder and will continue to do so. Get in here, jump in, go for it. The only thing we can do now is wait and see what the future holds.